and it looks like two of you are probably didn't make it. <laughs> it was, okay, looked like it was All right, so whatever. So let's say 14 then. Let's say 14. So that's four. Deacon Ballard, Deacon Ballard is on the way. And Deacon Ballard, 15. Good. We don't have to have the meeting about whether he's going to continue as a deacon. Good. Right in So that makes us the hot spot in the real midtown Gainesville, Florida, which is actually between campus and downtown. The fake Midtown Gainesville, Florida, is past campus and all the swamp and all that shit and all the little sushi. That, that is the fake Midtown. That's totally not Midtown. This is Midtown. The area that is going to be bought up by the University of Florida to make more buildings that are unoccupied and to displace cultural entities that are occupied by at least 15 people. There'll be less people probably when they rebuild. Um, that's Midtown. That's where we are. We're in Midtown, Gainesville, Florida, home of the fighting theaters and the Boeing Institute. Yeah. So, let's see. What kind of a show will this be? I think it's going to be a, a dead week show. It's dead week. Yeah. This is the time between summer A and summer B. So, this will be, you know how like in Mexico they have the, the Day of the Dead celebrations and it's a big huge deal? That's what we're doing here. This is Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead Tabernacle of Hedonism. Reverend Angel Dust will illuminate you to some amazing things that have happened recently as a result, a direct result, of our exorcism of Governor Rick Scott. Okay, we have some good news and some better news. So that's good. Laquania is here. How are you, Laquania? I saw your beautiful promo for, uh, what was it called? It's, it's the... My Valentine's. Right. And uh, I, I love that. I like that that's on my timeline, and I've shared that with other people. And I watched it, and um, I, I thought it was quite well done. Who, who edited that for you? I did. You edited that yourself? Yeah, it took me 82 and 72 hours. Damn. All right. So that's what's... Give her, yes, give her a round of applause. Do it yourself. That's, that, we're artists here. That's the way we roll. You know? Let's see. I have a full glass of beer. That's a problem. That's what I can do about it. Yeah. All right. So it's going to be a low-key show. Not a low-key show. A low-key show. Uh, so I was in the new space called the... What's it called? Uh, what's it? It's not the warehouse. It's the it's the factory. The factory. That's a nifty space. Have you guys been there? No. So the factory is just past the jam on the right hand side. It's covered with paper. I'm not sure what their you know ultimate idea of it is, but private club. yeah, it's a private club. Maybe I shouldn't tell. I'm supposed to tell. I don't know. You should tell people because then they'll then they'll want to go in and then they yeah. can tell them no, you can't come in here. Yeah. <laughs> That is what I want. Okay. Well, How are you drawing? Uh, you just, you can't, you're not going to get in. Yeah. No one's going to get in. No one's going to get in. But you can go up there and look, look and, and wish you could get in. Anyway, um, my band leader did a video about his cat. He's obsessed with his cat. And uh, he did it in the factory. And I went there for the first time. And they gave me five glasses of wine and seaweed snacks. And they were delicious. And the wine was uh, not out of date. It wasn't good, but it wasn't out of date, so I drank all of it. And we watched, we watched that uh, that movie. Uh, what, what's it called again? The Life of Brian. The Life of Brian. Ah, the Monty Python film. And I had a blast. I, so I, I thought the place was great. They had a little stage in there. Um, it, it could, it's a great multi-purpose space, and our own. Tabernacle of Hedonism, Minister of the Interior, has a little area in there where he's doing his uh, graphic design work. And he showed me some new pictures he's working on. I thought that was pretty cool. I do have a protein. All right, so here's how the show's going to work today. Reverend Angel Dust will do the sermon and reveal incredible things. Tom Miller, Drunk Stories and Poems. I'm going to read three or four or five drunk stories and poems, but I'm going to do it numerically, and you will call out numbers, and we will guide our way into whatever story it is, so, such that I don't pick it. 
So that way I'll read something I probably don't want to read that you probably might want to hear, and it'll be fun. All right, and now a brief commercial announcement. Should we do that now? You want to do that now? Let's wait, let's wait. No, no, it's not on enough. But we'll wait. But anyway, Daniel Timothy Ballard is here. Deacon Ballard, give him a round of applause. We know you've been busy, but we almost had a meeting to figure out if you were still wanting to. No, I was actually watching. Louder? I was actually at Halloween. Can we get more? No, these are just too quiet. These are just too quiet. Hey, thanks for coming. I kind of got lost watching the episode Break for Bad. I was actually about to start making the direction for uh, the farmer's market. Great. But I'll tell you guys about that later. Nobody cares. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And then, and then, Nobody cares. It doesn't matter. Yeah. How you doing? Thanks for coming. Good, good. Well, what's the shirt tonight? I'm trying to figure out. Oh, it's super milk. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would like to say. All right. Thank you. You may step down. Let me get you back. John Walser, a.k.a. Wahoo, is here. He's going to give us some political insight, maybe sing in France. You never know what he's going to do. Hopefully some jokes. Uh, yes. Daryl Mark Chapman is our feature comedian tonight. Give him a round of applause. He, he in true comedic fashion, he took the extraordinary... Oh, there he is. You're not him. Why are you imitating him? Get out! Get out! Get out! He's pretending to be Daryl Mark Chapman. Daryl, uh, Daryl made the, the strange move of trimming it, trimming his beard mostly off for Beard Off 12, which is essentially what this is tonight, Beard Off 12. How many beards do we have in the audience? Anyone? I see one. Wesson? Wesson, you might win it. I think you can compete, and Blue, I think, can compete. So it looks like three beards. Oh, and... Um, Wahoo's got enough of a beard to compete. You don't have enough of a beard to be to be an adult male. Uh, what? Daryl be Daryl. You're pretending to be Daryl too? Daryl versus Daryl. Daryl versus Daryl. I don't know. I don't know if I want to see that. No idea. Okay, Merkins are also accepted. If any young ladies are wearing a Merkin, or young men are wearing a Merkin, or old men are wearing a Merkin. <laughs> Now the show is starting to happen. He wants to see young men with Perkins. Well, thank you for that. No. It's terrific. No. You cannot get this kind of quality entertainment if the little is over the mic. All right, so with that in mind, I think it's probably time. Oh, and James Wesson is getting open time. He can do anything he wants. Can you, can you please be quiet? Can you please be quiet? Can you please be quiet, Daryl? Talking to him. Uh huh. Fuck you up. So anyway, uh, Wesson. Yes, Wesson will have you know a good stretch of time to do whatever he wants. Cause that kind of show. It's gonna be low key. It's gonna be grungy. I think really the only way to make this show worthwhile is to drink it into worthwhileness. That's what I'm gonna do. It's dead week. I don't have to go to school tomorrow. I don't have to do anything. I. I I'm going to do nothing. What's that? Oh no, what do you do? Oh, Santa Fe. They do everything different. Yeah, you're still in school, Santa Fe. What do you do at Santa Fe? Zoology. They have a great program over there. They need a giraffe at the zoo. They don't have one, right? The birds and snakes and strange little critters on four legs. And those birds, those fucking birds, that make that noise across the field. You know the ones I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah what are they called? Penny hens? Penny hens. Peacocks. Male peacocks. The blue. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're wrong. <laughs> They're any hands. Yeah, you need three years or four years before. No, I'm just kidding. I'm glad you're doing that. I love the animals. It's fun to do the show. <laughs> All right, so it's pretty clear.
clear. I see what's happening now. By the way, in case you haven't noticed, this is the best show in Gainesville. And uh, you don't, in the world actually, but, but Gainesville for sure. And you don't have to know that or believe it for it to be true. We've discovered in science lots of things that we didn't know were true. We later learned they were. And when you guys catch up, you're going to figure out what I already know. Oh, you're coming in? No, I'm just um, all right. Now, I, I really do want to get everyone's attention, at least for the front part of the show. You can talk all over my act, because I can handle myself. Um, but you do not want to piss off Jamba, okay? You really need to give attention to our sermon, because I'm about to introduce our spiritual leader, and that's a big fucking deal. So please give him your attention. I promise you he has some seriously amazing things to tell you, and he will be sharing the word. And if you believe... You will achieve the one and only Reverend Angel Dust. Thank you, Reverend Angel. Thank you, for 
supporting Jamba, the great dumpster, the sacred dumpster, and the exorcism of George Scott. Hallelujah. So where are you? Hallelujah. Well, actually, yeah. yeah. Bush cross over there. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm speaking in tongues. Leave him alone. <laughs> What is, what is Governor Scott's first name? Rick. Rick Scott, okay. Also known as... Dick Scott. That's hard to pronounce. Also known as that dick. Yeah, that dick. That's easy to pronounce. As you know, uh, Mr. Morgan. Dick Scott. Uh, I believe it's John Morgan from Orlando. Yeah, I'm oh, yeah. that. Jackson. He's also from Jackson. He was raised in Jacksonville and practices law in Orlando. Main office is Jacksonville. But the main office is in Jacksonville. He's for the people, and he has coughed up four million dollars of his own wealth and fortune awesome. to actually make amendment to an actuality. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. That's a lot of money. Yeah. That's a lot of money. So if you get into a fender vendor, remember to call up Mr. Morgan and he will schedule you an appointment with a physician. And you have to do that within two weeks. Otherwise, uh, you have to let your Right. So make sure you call up Mr. Morgan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is good for Mr. Morgan is good for Amendment 2 and is good for Florida. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the other corner is the honorable opposition. Amendment 2. Who could it be? Probably some that, individual. Uh, who is not from Florida. What? That's absurd. A casino owner okay. from Las Vegas. Oh. By the name of Sheldon Adelson. That one really sucks. Of course, we did a quick internet search on Sheldon Adelson. <laughs> and we found out that not only was he the biggest donor to Mitt Romney's presidential campaign, oh, 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 I need a bucket, I need a bucket. <laughs> but he was funding Mitt Romney's campaign with laundered money. <laughs> From drug smuggling. That one is dirty. No wonder he wants marijuana to stay illegal. He's making too much money from it being illegal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And of course, uh, his casino is down the street from uh, the Pink Flamingo which was uh, Meyer Lansky's establishment. As you know, Meyer Lansky uh, was immortalized in The Godfather One, and also was reputed to be the most powerful person in the United States in the 1950s, and the secret uh, partner of the Pink Flamingo Club, and also helped defeat Mussolini. In fact, uh, a lot of people give him credit for defeating Mussolini. I think that's the question. I'm getting confused. You mentioned Pink Flamingo. Is this the guy that can talk with his butthole? Yeah! Uh, no, this is the Pink Flamingo Club. Uh, 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 he doesn't do butt pranks either. Yeah, uh, you know, Spiegel? That was Meyer John Lansky's friend. In Havana, they had a little meeting, and they decided to offer And in attendance was our own uh, 
Tropicana gig from Tampa, who may have also had a hand in the uh, assassination of Kennedy. Church runs deep. Yes. <laughs> it certainly runs long. So anyway, uh, <laughs> apparently he is involved in prostitution. Excellent. So he has something good to say. And is reputed to be Netanyahu's uh, pimp. <laughs> Netanyahu? Yes. Yahoo, what do you have to say about that? Oh, uh, okay. So, uh, Vice President of the American Turf Association has entered the building and ran applause. legalization of medical marijuana because he's seen so many families destroyed by drugs and demon alcohol. Yeah. Now, if we legalize weed, we could have weed-funded rehab of demon alcohol. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And sniffing gasoline. Yes. Hallelujah. Get your ass over here. Think about how many families have been destroyed because warring factions were fighting over oil fields. Hallelujah. So that, and get gasoline, you can sniff it, you can get high, you can get addicted to it, but it's perfectly legal. Hepnus Almighty, which is actually a renewable source of oil, which can be used for cars, and also uh, bioelectricity, is illegal. Sorry, Governor Scott, we disagree with you. Yes. Anyway, let us pray for Amendment 2. And let's really do it. And let us pray for Governor Scott. That he sees the light and eventually supports Amendment 2. And let us all pray for Sheldon Adamson and that he find a new career <laughs> and supports family values. Hallelujah. It's right. all about family values here in the Tabernacle of Jesus. Hallelujah. Especially our own family. Here at 1982. We have values here? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Alright, our mother. Our mother. Who grows the greatest art up there in heaven? Who grows the greatest art up there in heaven? Under the influence of the domestic that they trim up there. Under the influence of the domestic that they trim up there. Jesus, the 
kingpin. Jesus the kingpin. Who died upon the cross. Who died upon the cross. For all of our drug trafficking. For all of our drug trafficking. Might be responsible. Might be responsible. For thine is the cow pie. The rain, the rain and the shrew. Amen. 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 A woman. A joy. A reformed Sheldon Adelson. All smoking medical marijuana. All smoking medical marijuana. With a joy. God has blessed them, hallelujah. Small pool guitar and a harmonica. You know we don't have a sound system, so 
this is going to be campfire shit. So pull it in, keep drinking. If the song, if you don't like the song, drink more. You'll like it eventually. Just get in here and uh, let's see what these guys are going to do. All right? We're just friends. Let's bring them up. Can I get a little more brunch mic over here, whatever this guy is? Is this, is this the mic that uh, Sarah Mike stuck in his butt or whatever? All right, so it sounds better. That mic's been retired. How do you want to do it?
So who wins? He wins. So, all right, let's just, just assess the severity of the situation. The vice president of the American Turn Association just called out a UF student on the president's list. In other words, what we do in the tabernacle of hedonism with the vice president of the American Turn Association is better and more correct than what they do with the president at the University of Florida, which means I'm right. In, in my defense, I did have a scholarship. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give him five minutes since he won everything. Please welcome to the stage the vice president of the American Turn Association. Stupid, psycho, self-involved, hedonistic freaks. So you may not appreciate my style or my class, but if you don't like my poetry, you can stick it up your ass. Yeah! I am not a crook. Um, I just did it. <laughs> Poop. Poop. Weren't you listening? Yeah, I heard it. Say it again. Poop. This is how these things go. Let's see. Um, have I made up any new jokes? No. Uh, uh, I did, but one of them is very good. No, this this is really bad. Don't say it. It comes across as very racist. You know, I don't do that. Even though I'm the least racist person on the planet. <laughs> so, I think that probably would be a bad thing. Right. Hey, have you got any paraphernalia? Yes, I certainly do. Tell us about the new paraphernalia. Oh, goodness. Oh, okay. Oh, I think I forgot that one. Oh, wait, I have one. Everybody pay attention. You get free stuff, baby. I'd rather, I'd rather be sticking my finger up my phone. Yes. Anybody else need one? Does anybody need a I'd rather be sticking my finger up my butt button? Oh, 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 oh,
sent me into that uh, Quentin Tarantino film, uh, and I came up from the cellar and I said, uh, welcome to the welcome Bates Hotel. Is that what it's called? I, I can't remember, I'm too fucked up. What do you want from me? I'm Steve Buscemi. Brian Eno in an argument with Okay, I'm going to do my last imitation, then I'm going to welcome our feature comedian to say. All right, this imitation is a conversation between Tom Petty and Bob Dylan. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Great to be here at the Tom Miller Show. And now please welcome to the stage Tom Petty and Bob Dylan. Oh, yeah. I'm waiting on some new music. I'm going to be in John Electric and get a play the uh, normal funk music in a place. No, I'm going to tell you anything to make me feel this thing. Yeah. Uh, man, I didn't even get a lucky set. You know? 
You know, most makes me want to go out there and have kids just to prove everybody wrong. You know, <laughs> have Billy, my son. Come here, Billy. I'm not gonna hit you. Come here. Come here. Sorry, you got such a bad dad, kid. I really am. I did tell everyone I didn't want you to. I run along. Look at Daddy's bomb. Marijuana. That's relevant here. Uh. I saw a baby in a grocery store recently. It, was, uh, it wasn't by itself, it had parents pushing it. But uh, it was a female baby. I know this because it had a little pink bow and a little patch of hair right here, and it was dressed in pink. So either it was a female baby or a cross-dressing baby. I'm not judging, it's fine. But the weird thing about this baby is it had pierced ears. And that bothered me, you know, because this baby can't even talk yet. And they're already making decisions for it. What if it grows up and it's like a bull dyke? It doesn't want fucking earrings. But now it's got it because fucking parents are douchebags. Like, that's not okay. And we walk around and we see this and we don't say anything. But it wouldn't be okay if this baby had gauges, thug life tattooed across her stomach, you know, fucking prosthetic arm that shot lasers. Like, this wouldn't be okay. But pierced ears, who gives the fucking shit? Whatever, who cares? I don't care. I'm honestly starting to not care. It's it's good. It's a nice feeling. It helps me out. I don't kill myself, so awesome. <laughs> uh, I was a kid once. Any of you kids? Yeah. But uh, I sold candy at school because I had that market on lock. You know, it was just me. I was the only person selling candy at school, and the adults they got really angry at me and they'd ask me what I was selling it for. And I was selling it because I wanted to buy a guitar, so I would tell them I'm selling it for band. And it seemed to work. Nobody ever questioned me after that. But one day I got called to the office, because I guess the word got around, and the principal calls me in the office and he goes, son, you can't sell this at school. And I was like, well, band, you know, people like that, they sell it at school, why are they allowed to do it and not me? And they go, well, you could be taking this home and putting drugs in it. What? Yeah. <laughs> If I was putting drugs in it, I would have charged more than a dollar. Fuck, are you serious? <laughs> Fuck this stupid ass guy. That's why he's the principal of that bullshit school. Because he's a fucking idiot. But uh, you guys don't know him, so it's fine. But take my word. Fucking moron. Uh, told y'all earlier, I don't want kids. That's actually not 100% true. I do want kids. I just don't want to have kids. Because there's already enough kids on the earth. I want to adopt. That would be nicer to me. But whenever I do have kids, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have a conversation with my children that most people don't. And that's the death talk. You know, we have the sex talk and the, oh, grandma's in a better place now talk. What about, like, the death talk? You know, you guys remember Billy from a second ago. Billy! Come here! Billy! All right, there you go. Okay. We have to have a man-to-man -man talk. You're going to die. What's that? No, you're not going to live forever. Don't be ridiculous. Now, uh, I know we told you Grandma went to heaven. Maybe. We're not, a, we're not exactly 100% on that. Truthfully, we don't even know if there is a heaven. It's probably just darkness. But while I have you here, uh, Billy, Santa Claus isn't real, and uh, Jesus is Middle Eastern. So, uh, you know, five years old, it's time to grow the fuck up. Thank you, three people paying attention. Yeah! <laughs> uh, I'm not supposed to turn my back to the crowd, but I keep putting the list behind me, so I have to. I don't, uh, I don't hunt, and I'm going to go ahead and assume that nobody here does either. And I used to hunt, though. Whenever I was younger, I learned to hunt. And I, I think you should. I think you should learn, because you never know in the future when you're going to need that. You know, some kind of survival bullshit that will probably never happen, but you don't know, because we're fucking like stupid humans. <laughs> But if you live in the middle of nowhere and you can't get food, whatever. But you know, now I have a job, I have access to food and stuff, so I don't need to go kill things. But, I don't know, it doesn't bother me. It bothers me when people hunt, though. I don't, I don't know why. I think, it's, I think it's this. I think it's when people from Gainesville travel to Alaska to kill an elk. You know, maybe you just like to kill shit. You know, maybe you're just a dick who likes to shoot stuff and see it die. I don't know. But Indians, like, the thing that pissed me off is Indians, when they would kill something, they would, like, dance for it. And they would release its song, and they'd say, thank you so much for keeping us alive. And what do we do now? Well, we fucking shoot the deer, and you go, all right, uh, take a selfie with this deer real quick. 
All right. I'm going to post this on Facebook. Show everybody how much of a man I am. That's how that works. All right. I'm going to do one more. Actually, I'm going to leave you all. I'm going to leave you guys with a question. Uh, whenever I was a kid, I'm sure you too, when you were too loud in the classroom, your teacher would say, use your inside voices. Was I the only one trying to communicate telepathically? <laughs> That's it! I'm fucking done! God damn! Thank you. He got the attention of the audience, delivered quality comedy, and then just said, BURN Knock that shit over. And to be honest with you, uh, hey, seriously, a lot of comedians can learn from you, man. That's the way you win the day, man. Just fucking get, get the attention of the crowd, deliver good humor, and then kick some shit over on the way out. That's, that's always been my philosophy, so I think you really, you, you just get there. Um, we're here at the Tabernacle of Hedonism in Midtown Gainesville, Florida, home of the Fighting Gators and the Brain Institute. Uh, my next guest always keeps us in touch with what's happening politically. He's one of the most passionate performers that we have at the show. Uh, he speaks a number of different languages, and he tells some very, very just jokes that are so fucked up and wrong that they're, they tend to be funny. Because they're real. The re real is the way I would describe it. He really is the guy he is. He's not putting on airs, and that's my favorite kind of entertainer. Please welcome to the stage the one and only Wahoo! Ah, well, I had a guy come into the store the other day, and uh, he's buying three hundred dollars worth of shit, and I almost told him to find somebody else to wait on, because he gets his news from Fox News. He said Obama was the worst president in U.S. history, and George W. Bush was the best. Because George W. Bush had America's interests at heart. He told us, told me that Bo Bergdahl was a traitor, and he walked off his post, left his weapon there for anybody who wanted it, and asked around town how he could find the Taliban to turn himself in. And this guy's not mentally ill. Uh, he insisted the guy was, did it premeditatively and all that jazz. And uh, you don't hear the correct story unless you listen to Fox News. Now, I think Fox News should be made to verify all that shit they're talking by the FCC. Yeah. Find them if they can't prove it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, man, and then I had another employee come up to me later and tell me that he had a woman come up to him and said that uh, how can all these people, and they're obviously referring to homosexuals, be so immoral when, when they know they'll be punished by God? Jeez. He was ready to walk away from her, too. <laughs> so we got at least a couple of liberals working at Sears anyway. Sears? C said no. Get your tools, fellas. That's right. I refuse, I refuse to get dirty for a living, so I sell tools to mechanics who do. Uh, did have a good experience tonight uh, with my car. I went up to get the front end of the line. It's been two weeks since I bought a new tire. Brand spanking new tire, and it's already worn out. Uh, and the guy found a problem with the front suspension that has to be fixed before you get a landing. But he still fixed a major thing wrong with the alignment and didn't charge me anything. So I got a 
got to tell you, this is uh, Tire Outlet on Main Street, across from the post office up there, about 14th Avenue. If you need tires or any furniture work on your car, that is the only place in town to go. And for Tom, because he likes to hear me sing in front. C'est une chanson But life separates. 
and uh, she may actually go down and go to jail for a crime she didn't commit. And so we may have a eminent one here political here. prisoner, political prisoner from in the attendance at the Tabernacle of Eden. We may have a political prisoner, a Tabernacle political prisoner. Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. Tear it for her. One here. Yay. One here. She goes down. If she goes to jail, we are definitely going to be free. Fundraisers. Free Katie. We will free Katie. And we are going to be doing fundraisers. Yes. <laughs> now, so the matter at hand is to do this. Just a moment. Yes. What qualifies as a merkin? A merkin is a. Okay, let's just look up the, the definition. That's a good question. Oh my God, somebody threw their trifle brochure away on the stage. Unbelievable. All right, let's see what a merkin, merkin is. I have to get off of the Orgasmatronics site. So for people who have crabs, they shave it off and put a merkin on it. Prostitutes, that could be men or women. Can anybody wear a merkin? A merkin is a false pube. Is that, is that what it is? Why, is why, why have we decided that's okay in the beard offs? Because Jen, uh, Deacon Jen decided that it was okay. Oh, Jen had a merkin. Yeah. Who is Jen, anyway? She's working or has a merkin? What was that? The merkin usurped? She had a usurping merkin? Come 
up? You already have a market? Yes. Don't, don't, don't. Be careful. All right, hook that market up. All right, so we have a market up here. Um, hey, hey, tall fella with the, with the curly hair and a handsome gentleman. Do you want to be in the beard off? You can win. Yes. Prizes. I mean, can I get a beer first? You can get a beer. Have a beer. I stand in trial by combat. Do you want to be in the beard off? No. You, you already want to, you're already a champion, right? I want to name a champion. Okay, so we're having a beard off, all right? So you're not in, you're not in. We have a beard, a merkin, and a, and a hair. You have one hair. What is the hair that she has called? You mentioned it's three hairs. Three, she has three hairs. Yeah. Oh, you're in the you're in the beard off. Okay. Katie has three hairs. Katie, Katie, come up here. Can I get the beard off? Now we are only yeah, yeah. we are only uh, bringing Katie up here to actually draw attention. Yeah, yeah. Please take it to the fact that <laughs> of the existence okay. of fascist, lights capitalist be. prohibition in the United States of America right. and okay. how we need to right. end it. This is a photo moment. My God, we're actually having a beard off. This is very exciting. By the way, the most magnificent beards that are here. Wait, there. Oh, my God. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Can I get a shot of that, please? I just really need a shot of that, just for a minute. I told you the show gets interesting. You guys didn't believe me. What about that cute little chubby guy with a goatee? You really said that, didn't you? There's a cute chubby guy with a goatee somewhere, apparently. Uh, can I get up the market? Wait, where'd he go? Can you do it again? Oh my god! Did you pull her market out? To win? Did you sabotage her market? What are you thinking? What's that woman that beat the other lady's legs so she couldn't skate in the competition? Is that you? Did you? What is that woman's name? Did you Nancy Kerrigan her? No, no, it was the other girl. Nancy Kerrigan's the girl that got me. Did you Tanya Harding? Did you Tanya Harding her Murkoff? Her Murkin? Her Murkin? Get out of here! Okay, let me let me just get a shot of that. That's fantastic. It's beautiful. Wait, can I get that? Get a shot of that? That's just beautiful. No, make a nice face. I like your looks. Nice. Okay, all right, fine. All right, here we go. All right, let's do the competition. All right, is everybody in that's 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 having that's in the competition? This is Beard Off 12. We actually have contestants. We're starting to learn how to do this now. I figure by the end of summer we're actually going to have a proper Beard Off. Okay, so Beard Off, here we go. What do you win? What can we give them? Is Jen here? Jen's not here. Okay. Hey, hey. Prize. It's your painting, man. You burn it. Stick it in your butt. I don't give a shit. I just needed gas to get home and, and some ramen. You know what? I gotta get up in the morning. You know? Wait, wait for Jen. All right, here we go. All right, so we have three contestants. And wait, we lost one. We lost a beard. Did we have another beard? He's waiting on his beard. All right, three contestants. It's two Merkins. It's two Merkins and a beard. <laughs> that's a great name for a band. You owe me and the Reverend Angel does money. If that's the name of your band, I want I want you to give us money. Royalty. Hi, we're two merchants in a beard, and the first song is called Eat It. So I don't know. <laughs> eat it, eat it. Eat it. No one wants to be defeated. Okay, here we go. You gotta put your merchant. Oh wait, no, you have three hairs. Merkin, three hairs and a beard. That's another band name. Holy shit, I can make a lot of money doing this show. All right, Reverend, if you will illuminate each of our contestants as we ask for applause. Contestant number one, Merkin. Contestant number two, three hairs and a Merkin. Contestant number three, Say it. 
and, 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 and we're going to get in trouble, but unless anyone has a strenuous objection, we will listen to it because we are the Tabernacle of Hedonism. and we're, we're an all expenses paid deal to the top of the earth. I don't know what that means. Are we correct that the Vice President of the Church Association won the beard off tonight? Does, does anyone dispute that? I do. I do. I yes. As well. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a... No, no, hang on. I'm afraid, I'm afraid that there, there is a, a bit of authority here in this competition. He's no ordinary protester complaining against the win being the vice president. He is, in fact, the president of the American Turd Association. Gene. Gene. So, as he outranks the vice president, I would like to hear the reason why Gene should not win this competition. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not asking for me to win the competition. I'm just saying that Jen's not here. I think Jen would win the beard off. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right because I don't want any any problems or any any I don't want any dispute about the results. What I'm hearing is that the contestants who have participated in the show, because Jen isn't here and would have won, ought to be invalidated, hence no winner tonight. Is that what I'm hearing? I agree. I agree. Jen can't win because she's here but she should have won had she been here. In which case everyone else is invalidated. Yeah. Is that correct? Is that correct? All right, that's it. Beard off 12 is invalidated. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a disaster. Comments? Damn it, Mr. President. Well, why are you doing this to me? Hey, I wasn't doing this to you. I was... No, this is for Jen. It's not to you. It's for Jen. It's for Jen. I sense discomfort from Gene. I sense discomfort from me. I sure want this beer at all. Well, it didn't happen, you know. You're the vice president of the Turd Association. Isn't that enough? Do you need everything? Yes. Do you need to be the winner of the beer off too? Yes. Because that's kind of shitty. So what? I'm a selfish bastard. Gene, are you enjoying the show so far? No, not at all. Thank you, Gene. How's it, I mean, how's it make you feel, though? It's good, though, right? A good feeling? I'd rather be sticking my finger up my butt. And if you want those pins and stickers, the Vice President and the President of the Beverage Journal Association are here. Thank you so much for making sure that this beard off was one of the best beard offs that never happened. I was actually surprised that the... Uh, I, the results were unbelievable. I think that that was surprising at the three-year beard. I thought... And, and actually, I thought the VP was going to take it, and then yes, I thought also the three-year beard would, would have done it. Oh, you do. Well, well, you have to come back for Beard Off 13. We'll see you at Beard Off 13. Ladies and gentlemen, a commercial. A commercial. Please welcome to the stage Deacon Daniel Timothy Ballard. Give him a round of applause. Hallelujah. Excellent Beard Off. All right, this is a commercial. Shh. Commercial. We're paying for this, so don't talk over it. Uh, yeah, they're paying me with stuff and things. And things that I don't have to talk about that make up our lives. Blah, 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 blah. Well, anyway, I have a business with my lady here, Rachel Wayne, um, at the Farmer's Market now. We sell toys and puppets, puppet toys. These are all made from scratch based off of uh, kaijus and puppets that I've actually made. Uh, they are plastic. They're pretty badass. Um, I like them. One has swords for hands. The other one has three eyes and hands, teeth and stuff. But here's the thing. Our big thing is we're selling the little walkie alligators. I'll show you. No, I made them and sculpted them in mold and actually poured in the bone caps of the polyester and casted it myself. So it's a little bit cheaper, well it's a lot cheaper than getting a 3D printer, and it's more do it yourself. So we sell these uh, alligators that, hey! yes, uh, they're acrobatic alligators, ladies and gentlemen, acrobatic hey, alligators. They walk. <laughs> they jump on people. They get in their faces. 
They poke you in the eye. They'll land right here, right there in the stool. They do not make stool. That's a beneficial uh, thing for having pets. No and also, they walk on walls if, they, if you want them to. They just want to walk through books like fucking Oh my god, that's awesome. But yes, they are fucking awesome. Hey, put it on the roof again. Hold on, I gotta get a shot of that. What is it doing up there? Hold on. I don't know, but I think it's going to go for your nads. Hang on. I think it's gonna poop. No, it, it, just in time for the American Tree Association. Oh my goodness! All right, are we good? Okay, so basically it's an old school uh, style uh, puppet uh, alligator that you would get at a carnival. That basically you put it on the ground, you walk it like so. It's pretty adorable. For six dollars. And we're two for ten dollars. And here's the awesome thing. We, um, I'm actually going to show you a prototype, which we'll have these done by Wednesday. Uh, I made a prototype of dragons that are made just like this that I am going to paint in the Game of Thrones style. Uh, yeah. Those here just love you. Oh my god, those toys are so cute. I want you to make them. Yes. So, this actually get a freaking dragon. And if they are pretty adorable, right? Look at it. And these are going for $8. Alright, can you give me a pose? Give me a pose. You going that way? Go this way. Oh, that's perfect. That's it. That's it. There we go. Look at that. Priceless. Oh, cool. Priceless. And by the way, uh, soon uh, after my brother can get himself a. Uh, Someone uh, to take care of the kids uh, while he can do art. Um, he actually works on the cartoon show Adventure Time. The episode Breezy. Adventure Time! He wrote the episode, co wrote the episode Breezy that aired not this past week but the week before. He's going to do the packaging for these toys soon. So, you'll actually get art from someone that works with the Hensons, me, and uh, affiliated with uh, the Ugly Doll Toys if you ever heard of those. And and, uh, yes! you're totally throwing me off, but yes, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Also, uh, Rachel here has a play that's airing or going, I don't know what exactly it is, I don't know the play lingo. Uh, why don't you tell them, because you don't work on it. All right, so I'm directing a play um, about death and dying. It's a very dark southern funeral comedy called Feel and Departed at High Springs Playhouse, and it's hilarious. Our opening weekend was a complete success, so I encourage everybody to come and see it. It's uh, $10 regular, $9 student, and it's running for three more weekends, so check it out. And come to the Farmer's Market this Wednesday. Wednesday, 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 and these guys will be painted up all fantastically. And we'll have toys for sale. Thank you. Bye, do it yourself. You teach your kids how to do it yourself. Do it yourself. God damn it. Thank you very much for a great night. Oh, I got some great pictures. Got some great pictures of that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get into some heavy political comedy. I want to try something different. Okay. Here's what I want to try. Let's see what happens.
I'll just throw the bar. Thanks, man. That was a good intro. That's fun, yeah. Say hello. Do this on new shit. I'm doing new shit so we get to send this for new shit. So bear with me for a second. Alright, which one of these? Okay. I don't know if you guys pay attention to the uh, news. This is a pretty obscure thing. Wealthy Catholics have been complaining about the new Pope, saying that he's too anti capitalist. They've been complaining that the new Pope is talking too anti capitalist. These wealthy Catholics are really pissed. They said, look, you guys better stop, start talking pro capitalist quick, but we're not going to let you rape our kids anymore. Yes! New jokes. Sorry, here we go. There are a hundred thousand rapes per year in America. Every year. If you do the numbers out, that's about twenty per frat house. <laughs> How many per uh, church? Per Catholic right, right. That's, that's a variation. Excellent though. <laughs> All right, this guy I know was like, you know. He he's actually favors pot being illegal. He, he literally like supports the criminalization of weed. And I was like, what the fuck, man? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't support the criminal. You know, I don't know if anybody's voting on in November or whatever for medical marijuana. But like, this dude, this douchebag I know is like totally supporting, you know, the illegality of weed. And I was like, oh, I get it. You're racist. And he was like, no. And I was like. Okay, wait, just let me just make sure here. Everybody, does everybody know that the drug war is racist? Is yes. everybody here? Everybody know? Is there anybody that doesn't know that the drug war is racist? Okay, no, no, okay. I just wanted to, I just, that's an informal poll. I just wanted to see. I, I thought it wasn't a coincidence, but white people know. Okay. Just want to, just want to make sure. I figured it, you know. All right, all right, here we go. Fuck it. Ancient Rome. Scholars, some scholars now think that the end of the Roman Empire, that the fall of the Roman Empire is a result of lead poisoning. That lead leaked into the leaked into the piping and like they eventually had more and more health effects, including behavioral disorders. And it fucked their shit up. I mean, it could have happened. You guys know the history. You know the history. At a certain point in the Roman Empire, the, as they started to go down, they started feeding people to lions or sport. And then, then they fucking got really crazy. They lost their shit. They started fucking their own mothers. Then, they went over to fucking deep end. They completely lost their shit, and they adopted Christianity as a religion. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of deities, if there is a God, I mean, I, I don't believe in God, but if there is a God, I don't think he'd be happy at all that people believe in him. I think he'd be really pissed about it. I think he'd say, I give you a mind, you stupid fuck. What are you doing believing this horse shit? No, seriously, if there, if there is a God, I think he'd be like, wait a minute. Like, th this doesn't make any sense. Like, I'm pretty sure I made you incapable of survival unless you have more problem-solving skills than that. <laughs> Yeah, God's in favor of atheism. <laughs> Fucking A. Here's another fucked up one. Catholics are always against contraception. The Catholic Church officially against contraception. And everybody else is like, look, okay, what the fuck? What do you want us to do? What the fuck should we do? And what do you do? To prevent disease and unwanted pregnancy. If not contraception, then what? And Catholics, they always say the same thing. Just fuck kids. <laughs> no, it's not God. Right? One more joke, I think, of the new shit. I, I, I criticize the military a lot, the Empire, you know, that whole thing. But it's not that I don't like the U.S. Army. It's a good army. 
Did you know that last year, in this world, in the whole world, nobody killed more non-white people than the U.S. Army? Yeah! <laughs> not the KKK, not some neo-Nazi group in Europe. The U.S. Army killed yeah. more non-white people last year you know, than any other organization. And I did that joke like a week ago, and this guy came up to me and he was like, Hey! Hey! You can't say that about the U.S. Army! And I was like, why not? He said, well, because it wasn't just the U.S. Army, it was the Air Force, the Navy, and the Marines also. It was the whole U.S. military that killed the most non-white people last year. <laughs> and for many years running. Many years running. Fuck yeah. Thanks, guys. That's five minutes. <laughs> How delighted I am with that performance. Congratulations, give him a round of applause. evening's festivities, it's like it's 12.14, did anybody get ripped off and they need, desperately need to go on and say something? Because now we're having an open stage. Because there's only two more things. There's random Tom Miller story poem moment, and then there's James Wesson closing the sound. With anything he wants to do, we are not in any way censoring anything James Wesson wants to do. The rest of the night is his. Anybody need to say something? Yes, Rachel Wayne. Go. I have a song that's been in my head all day that I feel like I need to get out. And then I've got a poem that I literally wrote like 30 minutes ago. So it's horrible. I hope you guys will like it. So for those of you who haven't seen me before, I like to sing songs a cappella because it seems really raw, you know, it kind of brings the lyrics to you. A lot of times the lyrics get drowned in instrumentation and, you know, I'll just shut up. So this is uh, Kay's Choice, Not an Addict. Who, who, who? Look at 
not having it's cool. I feel alive if you don't have it, you're on the other side. I'm not an addict, baby, that's a lie. You don't believe me. I don't believe you. Your eyes tell the truth that's blinded by your youth. That's all about your lie and how much pain you have seen. Because your age is dependent on your experience and time with the me. He broke me down and beat me up. You speak like it's a joke. But I'm subject to your intervention while I'm working in his yoke. Take me, leave me, beat me down. I'm a sad sap of a human. You're a champion of his crown. I'm taken by his passion. You're taken by his charm. I'm a sympathetic woman who's subject to his harm. Well, read me like a fucking book. For I'm a broken heart. You're empathic with a look. Well, I sit and do my part, find my trope and sadden TV. I'm a joke in daily life. I wish my life were a movie so I could wake from my daily strife. Thank you. to uh, the last two moments in the show. I'm going to check the time here. I'm seeing 12.20, it's going to work out just perfectly. I've decided I'm only going to do one bit. I was going to do three, but I want to give James Weston all the time he's given to us, ignoring the show. And so, I'm not ready. Okay, I'll do two bits. All right, here we go. The way this works is it's a number system, okay? Oh, I don't know what the number system is yet. 69. Uh, who said that? 69. I like that number. Number seven. Number nine. Number nine. What this is, is we're going to go into the Tom Miller archives of writings, and I'm going to let you do it, and it's all going to happen numerically. Three castles of love. No, I won't let the If you're interested in reading any of my works or listening to any music, you can go to Miller Works, Miller, that's me, Tom Miller, works.weebly.com. That takes you to my secret site, or just type Tom Miller Gainesville into your Google search engine, and you will be able to discover about 50 albums, full LPs, about 50 books of poems and poetry and over well over 200 independent videos. So if you're interested in checking out some of the stuff that I do, just put Tom Miller Gainesville into your Google search engine and, you know, have fun. All right, here we go. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so, um, Mark, pick a number between one and twenty. Fifteen. You're not, Mark. Seventeen. Seventeen. All right, hold on. You landed on the book called When I Fart, It's a Gift. Woo. Nice. Okay. Let me see how many stories are here. There's at least 20. All right. Um, pick a number from 1 to 20. 
11. Okay, here we go. So this is in the book, When I Fart, It's a Gift, and story number 11. So one, two, three. This is fun, see? We don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I have to read whatever happens. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. We have arrived. Can I get everyone's attention, please? We're making a video out of this, so I need your total focus. Shh. We're making a video, so I need your total focus. We're not really making a video, but not if I say that, I'm not paying attention. Um, it's called Poem for Otters. Yes. Do you guys like otters? You guys are otter fans. Okay. Otterly adorable. Do you have an Do you have an otter puppet? I was, you know, I was working. Because we can collaborate. I was working on the and it got squished. Okay. I'm going to do this twice, and then James Wesson's coming up. All right. Here we go. Poem for the otters. Nobody writes a poem for otters. These wonderful creatures that swim and play. Oh, nobody writes a poem for otters, neither Poe nor Hemingway. And if there's a poem about an otter, I have never heard it said. If such a poem exists, dear reader, it's a poem that I've not read. This may be the only poem to celebrate these animals, Lovely otters singing, dancing, and their meat is good for eating. Would you like to join me beating otters in the head with bats? That's what happened randomly. Okay. Yes, that was the story about Lady Pearl and the UC Club. Okay, let's try it again. I think this, I, I like this crew that we have to pick the randomness. One to 20. Seven. Seven. Okay. The way I'm working this, seven takes you to, this is fun for me too, because I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six. It takes you to when I fart, it's a gift. One to 20, go. One to 20. Somebody smack him. One to twenty. Seventeen. If that's otters, I'm going to read it again. You know that, right? Three, four. Seventeen, was it? No. It's twenty. Which one do you want? Seventeen. Let's go with twenty. Okay. Twenty. Just pick one. Seven. All right. Hold on. Eight. 9, 10, 11, okay, it's not going to be otters, 12, 13, 14, 15, this is going to be good, 16, 17, are we talking about 18 girls? 18, I prefer no, there's only 18, what was your first number? 17. It was 17? This is called uh, Talking Monkey or Look Ma, I'm a Chick. I'm sorry to pick this one, and this will definitely be the last thing I'm reading before James Weston because it's very um, uncomfortable. Talking Monkey or Look Ma, I'm a Chick. Man, did I have a wad of goop swelling up in my nutsack. <laughs> There was only one thing to do, jerk the monkey. But it wasn't going to be easy. I had used all the oil and the butter and the Pam oven spray and the milk and the egg whites and the Play-Doh and the loaves of bread and the plastic military men. There was nothing left to jerk the monkey with except for a tiny jar of sulfuric acid. Had I only done better in chemistry when I was in high school, I might have had the foresight to imagine the possibility that maybe, just maybe, 
Acid would melt off my prick. Stupid me. So I got the jar of sulfuric acid, poured it over my engorged knob, and began to jerk. And that's when my dick started talking. Hey, Miller, do you realize you just poured sulfuric acid on me? Pardon me, I asked my dick. I hadn't quite heard what it said because its tiny lips were so small and its voice was so shrill and strained like the Wicked Witch of the West when Dorothy dumped the bucket of water on her face. I said, I could, uh, continued my dick, I'm burning up, the skin is peeling. You're not going to achieve an orgasm unless you wash me off. I'm melting, melting! <laughs> Sorry, what's that I said? The voice was becoming softer. The lips were shrinking, shriveling. I couldn't hear what my dick was saying to me. Water, it said. Please, God, water. The pain, the pain. And that's when it hit me. I had done a remarkably stupid thing. And now there was nothing left in my fist but ooze and blood. Oh. Acid melts dicks, I screamed. Acid melts dicks, oh boy. I really fucked up my goddamn dick on this one. I washed up as best I could, but unfortunately everything I had come to know and love was gone. Nothing left down there but a bloody wound. Everything that I fear in women. So I took my shoes off and started doing the dishes. Thank you. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, James Wesson. I promised you earlier in the evening, hey ladies and gentlemen, I promised you earlier in the evening, we never fail to deliver. In the middle there, in the middle just for a second. You two on the couch. Vice President of Turd Association. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I got you. Okay. I promised you, because we have never failed to deliver, that for those of you that stayed late, you would see something remarkable. All right. This is the way the show has always happened. And that is why I typically, you know, choose to allow for James Wesson, who's also a deacon in our church and a renegade deacon, to conclude the show because he, you know he, he blows everybody away. So I hope you guys are ready for what what actually ended up happening tonight instead of what we wanted, which is that um, he is the renegade deacon, and he has informed me that his um, computer is not working so well, and he's not able to call up his songs, and um, now uh, as a result of having to be frustrated with that, he's been working on it all night. Um, he, he, he doesn't, he's not interested in performing. Yeah. Uh, bullshit! Come on, I want my money back. What are we going to do? I can't. Are you going to leave that?